Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And today we're going to talk about the cost of using Unity in 2024 and beyond, specifically Unity 6 and later. And no, the answer is not your sanity or your soul. What we're going to look at is the new pricing changes. It used to be pretty straightforward uh, when you bought Unity. That is not really the case anymore. I did a video on this back when the runtime fee was first introduced, but actually a lot of that has actually changed. So today we're going to break down what the costs are. Uh, what it used to be, basically, when you bought a Unity license, you either had personal, which made you had $100,000 less of revenue or funding, uh, you could basically use it for free. Uh, and then you had Unity Plus, which you'll notice they no longer offer anymore. Basically, anyone on the Plus plan uh, got an option to upgrade to Pro for a limited time on the existing cost of their Plus plan. Uh, but most of the Plus stuff got rolled into Personal, but not all of it. And then we have Enterprise on top of Pro. And the breakdown as it stands right now is Personal is free as long as you make less than a certain revenue limit. Uh, and then if you need to have it uh, for pro. So if you make more than $100,000 or you had more than $100,000 in funding, you had to jump to that pro tier. Now there was a median tier again. There used to be the plus tier here, which I think went up to $200,000 in revenue. Uh, and it also, the big difference to it is you could also ship for consoles. They've taken that away. Now, the number of people that have very little revenue but are making console games is pretty small, uh, but most of the functionality has been moved into the personal tier, so Plus is no longer offered at all. So if you had to go up to Pro, so if you made too much money, uh, you had to get into the Pro tier, and there you're looking at uh, just over 2K per year. And then you get into Enterprise. Enterprise is where you need to have source code access. It's basically Pro uh, with better support and source code and so on and so forth, and that was Call Us to find out. And then we've got industry. Industry is for people working and using it for like, um, you know, engineering environments or visualization, that kind of stuff. We're not really talking about industry today. It doesn't really apply. So we have had a number of changes to the way things work. And then they're actually pretty massive changes. Now, if you're a free user, the changes are actually almost all good with one exception. Uh, and we'll get to all of that right there. So first off now, Unity Personal. So that is the free tier. It went from $100,000 to $200,000 free. So you could have uh, $200,000 worth of revenue in the previous year or $200,000 in funding. Now, the key thing about the Unity Personal tier is that it has um, no runtime fee attached to it. So even if you make a super successful game, if you developed it under the Personal tier, you don't have to pay them anything extra. That was definitely a change they made in that regard. Uh, and for the better. So compared to Unity pre-Unity 6, uh, Personal is actually better in pretty much every regard. And the key thing here is the whole Unity splash screen. That's the reason why a lot of people would upgrade to Plus before. Well, that's gone now. So you do not need to get Personal in order to get rid of that splash screen. That is definitely a positive development. In my opinion, that was always a mistake because you force people to brand your game engine on the, the cheapest made games. It, it was a really weird showcase and a bad mistake, in my opinion, to start with. So that has been removed. The key thing here that you're going to get that you don't get from Plus, though, is you do not have access to consoles. If you want to have console access, you want to build your games for PlayStation or Switch or whatever, you need to have a pro license or better. It's one of those things to definitely be aware of. And then we get into the runtime fee. Now, another thing that came up when they first announced the runtime fee is they tried to apply the runtime fee to every game ever made in Unity. There is a reason why Unity blew up over this. It was a very dumb decision, and the way they implemented it was very bad. That aspect has been walked back. So the runtime fee is only going to apply to games that were developed in the Pro version or the Enterprise version of Unity 6 or later that hit revenue thresholds. We're going to break down the runtime fee in just a minute, but one of those things to be aware of. Now, another thing I want you to know about is this guy right here. Uh, the personal now has a log in requirements. So if you work offline and you do not have access to the internet for consecutive games, consecutive days, I mean, uh, Unity is just not tenable to you anymore. That is a requirement they put in there. You log in every few days to their servers. That is a change that has been made. And I know that one is definitely a deal breaker to some people. Uh, and in terms of this whole runtime fee, it's on a monthly basis, you have a choice of either the lesser of 2.5% revenue share uh, or the calculated fee based on the unique initial engagements per game. Both your revenue, initial uh, engagements, and your revenue are self-reported. So there's no dialing home or spyware or anything in the reporting for the runtime fee. Now, you may be asking the question is, okay, what about the license fee? Do I, if I'm paying this royalty on the runtime fee, do I still have to pay these licensing fees? And the answer is yes. And is it going to be these amounts? And the answer is no. So that is a key thing to be aware of here. Changes to Unity plans, 
this one right here. Uh, so they have added this runtime fee, which is kind of a royalty on top of things. We'll get to the calculator in just a second, but you are still paying your traditional subscription fees and those fees are actually going to be going up. Uh, so they have announced they will increase prices on Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise subscription plans in line with their previous price changes. So this is like an inflational change. I wouldn't be surprised if it went from 20, for, for like 2000 a month to maybe 2400 a month would be my guess. That's based on absolutely nothing other than the way that they have done these changes in the past. So yeah, they are adding this new runtime fee on top of a, a increase in the actual cost. Now, the big winner in all of this stuff is the personal tier. So uh, the runtime fee does not apply to personal. Uh, so you can now customize the splash screen going forward from Unity 6 and beyond. That was a big reason why a lot of people went to plus. Uh, there is revenue limitation limitations on here, but uh, it went from 100 up to 200 in annual revenue and funding uh, apply to organizations that use and accept the terms of Unity 6. That's the next version, theoretically coming sometime later this year. Uh, for example, if you have 1500 in combined revenue and funding, you can use Unity Personal starting with Unity 6. If you are on a previous version, such as 2020 LTS, you would need to upgrade to Unity Pro. Uh, and then other changes are coming, and this is the big one. There is now a login or sign-in requirement. And that obviously is going to be a deal breaker for some people, but this is the interesting thing. So now it's saying for up to 30 days offline, and I do recall it being only a few days before. So that is a positive change to a negative addition, I guess you could say. Um, and then Unity Plus, Unity Plus is completely and utterly gone now, so we're not going to talk about that anymore. But the biggest thing that you are losing now between here and Unity Plus as it exists today is the ability to target console. Otherwise, pretty much everything from Unity Plus has been rolled into the free tier, which is a, a good thing for the most part. Now we get to the very confusing part of this change, and that is the runtime fee. Now this is basically um, a royalty for using the Unity runtime. Now Unity runtime is basically uh, like the Java VM the, or the um, C Sharp VM. It's, it's the thing required to run Unity games on various different platforms. You can't get around using it. If you use Unity, you are using the Unity runtime. So basically this is them just adding a royalty on a per install basis. Uh, so that is how things are calculated here. And you've got a straight up breakdown of how things work. If you use Unity Personal uh, and your revenue, so you're qualified to use Unity Personal, uh, it will cost you nothing. So it doesn't matter how much you make, the, the calculations don't go here, but if you exceed the $200,000, you need to upgrade to Pro. But basically the runtime fee does not apply to Unity Personal people. So if you somehow manage to make a super breakout hit and you had no funding or revenue last year, uh, there's no runtime fee for your game which is nice until you, you can kind of get into a catch 22, whereas if your game needs, uh, if you're porting it to a console later on, however, you're gonna need to upgrade to pro. And then that version going forward will be hit by it. Just one of those things to be aware of. Now we move on to the pro calculations. Now the runtime fee actually goes down a little bit for enterprise. We'll show you an example of that in just a second, but I'm mostly gonna focus on pro. So this boils down to, did your make game make less than a million dollars in the last 12 months? If the answer is no, you are exempt from the uh, fee. So even here, so obviously for one, this only applies to Unity 6 and 4. So right now, let's say you made a million dollars and had uh, a thousand initial engagements. If you're wondering what engagement is, this basically is the install. So a user successfully and legitimately acquires, downloads, or engages with a game powered by the runtime fee for the first time in a distribution channel. So that means like a download from Steam or Epic Game Store or um, Xbox or something to that effect. Now do keep in mind, this stuff is self-reported now. Uh, theoretically, there is no spyware involved or anything of dialing home. So you're not gonna be able to review bomb out a game, although it does put the onus of reporting on the company that is actually making the games. So that is a challenge that exists right now. But if you do not use Unity 6, obviously no runtime fee at all. And if you've had over a million installs, a lifetime, and then you've made over a million dollars in the last 12 months, that's when it starts to kick in. And you can see it's gonna cost you about $125 a month. Your other option here is you could do it based off of a percentage of revenue. Now, generally, this is gonna be lower than this, but it comes down to how much money you make a month. So right now you're making $5,000 a month, you're going to see uh, 125. Here, if you're making $1,000 a month after you've made that initial million dollars, you're gonna see, again, this runtime fee is just so much cheaper than this one for the most part. But when we get up up into big numbers. So let's go up to there. So you see million dollars earnings of revenue. All of a sudden, the percentage of revenue is better. So you're not going to want to do the two and a half percent. You're going to want to just pay out this amount up here as opposed to the flat rate two and a half percent. I'm not sure exactly where the number crosses that threshold. Okay, so it's 400. 
thousand. Okay, so somewhere between four and five hundred thousand. All right, so there we go. So maybe four hundred twenty-five thousand. Yeah, so you're looking somewhere around $420,000. That's where um, the flat rate fee starts making more sense. And then if you're making like huge money, so let's say you're making $100 million a month, which, hey, congratulations, you will notice over here uh, that it's definitely better to go uh, the this route than this route. So uh, if one of those things to be aware of, there, there is a trade-off, the cost change slightly. Now, if we switch over to enterprise, uh, it's the same sort of deal, uh, same numbers work out. It's just the uh, percentages are lower. So the enterprise users uh, get a slightly better rate scale-wise on the installs. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Honestly, I think the runtime fee, it, it's mostly there now for them to capture money on super successful games. Um, and then they've gone out of their way now, and they screwed this up on the initial launch, but uh, the personal tier is pretty much an upgrade except for that lo login requirement, uh, but it, it got a lot better on the personal tier. Uh, and the pro tier is only gonna apply to people that are basically, again, made over a million dollars. So it's a pretty small, sub. super indie developers aren't really getting hit by this. It's just, if you're an, an A to triple A game engine company, you're now going to be paying them an additional fee on your success that you didn't have before. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to pay more uh, on the, uh, the the seats. You're still paying your seat license, and the, those licenses are going to go up. I honestly think, I, I don't know that they're going to make enough money off of this to capture the money out of it to justify the administration and the overhead costs of running it. I still think the entire runtime fee thing is a massive mistake. They should have either just straight up gone to royalties like Unreal Engine does on, on like the pro or enterprise tier or just raised seat costs. Now, again, this whole thing seems like a mistake to me, uh, but at least now we've kind of clarified, hopefully to you, what it actually costs to use Rundy, uh, to use Unity. And I think you'll find is for the most people out there, especially indie developers, it's gotten better, to be honest. Uh, but if you have a successful game, you're now going to basically pay a success tax on it. And the worst part is you're in charge of administrating that. Uh, I just think they're adding a layer of complexity that didn't need to be had, but it's also not the end of the world, except for, you know, Again, trust issues that this has developed, and I can 100% understand how people have trust issues with Unity going forward, especially with the initial overreach they had where they were trying to apply this to every Unity game ever made. And if they pulled that trick off, then I could see how they would definitely make money off of this and it would exceed the uh, overhead of running it. It's just nobody would let them do that, probably including the courts. So ladies and gentlemen, that is what it's going to cost to use Unity 6 going forward. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.